Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 3, Powers of Powers of 10. So we're going to look at powers of powers of 10 today. So first of all, it starts off with what is the volume of a giant cube that measures 10,000 kilometers on each side? So let's take a look here. If I had a cube, okay, like so, and I know I had a 10,000 kilometer side here, a 10,000 kilometer side there, and the height was also 10,000 kilometers there. What would the volume of that be? To find the volume of a shape like this, we're talking about taking each side and multiplying it by each side. Something along these lines. So 10,000 times 10,000 times 10,000. Which we could, we could simplify that one way of simplifying that would be that is the same as doing 10,000 and multiplying it by itself three different times, right? So that could work as a simple way of doing that. There's also another way of thinking about it too. If we think back to what we did last uh, yesterday, how could I write this as a base 10 number? Remember how we do that? If we take the number 10 and make it a base 10, we basically just count the zeros, one, two, three, four. And so we could say that, that 10,000 is the same as 10 to the fourth. So what I have here is 10 to the fourth times 10 to the fourth times 10 to the fourth. You follow so far? We good there? So that's that becomes this and there. Now because they're all the same base, I can add those up. Four plus four plus four, which is the same as 12. With me so far? So I end up with 10 to the 12th power. So that means what? It means I do a one and I add 12 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the volume would actually be, in this case here, that giant number kilometers cubed, okay? So we have millions, billions, trillions. So it'll be one trillion kilometers cubed would be my solution there. Again, learning how to convert these things to base 10 allows me to make it a pretty simple problem. I really don't wanna do 10,000 times 10,000 times 10,000. It's gonna take a long time. This is pretty simple to figure out, but there's also an easier way to look at it as well. Think about this. This is doing what? 10 to the fourth power, 10 to the fourth power, but I'm doing that three times, aren't I? So I'm actually doing 10 to the fourth three times. So what we notice is that this, something, if I have a power to another power, that becomes the same as 10 to the four times three power, which is 10 to the 12th. So when I have a power to a power, I'm actually gonna multiply those together to get a new power. So in our prior lesson, we talked about with our rule, we talked about when I multiply things the same base, the power, uh, the powers then add together. What we're looking at today though, is that when I have a power to a power, now I'm actually going to multiply those together. Let's take a look here at activity number two and see how this works out. Okay, so first we have 10 to the third squared. So we take the 10 to the third and we write that down. 10 times 10 times 10. And because we're squaring it, we do it again. 10 times 10 times 10. And when I count up all the tens I have here, I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six. So I end up with 10 to the sixth power. In the second example, I have 10 squared and I do that five times. So here's group one, group two, group three, group four, group five. I have five groups of 10 times 10. But in total, how many tens do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in total, I have 10 of those. Again, two times five is 10. Here, my grouping is 10 to the third power. That's my group that I'm starting with there. But how many of those groups do I have? I have one, two, three, and I have four. This is 10 to the third to the fourth power. Three times four is 12. Here, I'm gonna make groups of four tens. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna make two of those groups. One, two, three, four. And so in total, I have four times two is eight. This becomes 10 to the eighth power. Here, I have a group of 10 to the eighth. Well, that's, uh, that's all of that is 10 to the eighth power and 11 of those. I'm not gonna write that out because again, it's too many to write out. 
but I can do an exponential form. This becomes 10 to the 8 times 11 is 88 power, no problem. So we skipped it because it just was too crazy to write out. So based on this pattern, 10 to the m to the nth power can then become 10 to the m times n. And that's the way we could write that out as an equivalent expression with a single exponent, just like so. So let's take a look at an example of one of those on the next page, number three, where it says, if you took the amount of oil consumed in two months in 2013 worldwide, you can make a cube of oil, right? Make a cube of oil that measures 10 to the third meters on each side. How many cubic meters of oil is this? Again, to do a volume, that is gonna be you know, the length times the width times the height. In our case here, it's 10 to the third times 10 to the third times 10 to the third. In our previous lesson, we would have said, well, let's add those up. What we're saying today is this is really can also be written as 10 to the third and doing that three times, right? So what is three times three? is three times three, which becomes 10 to the ninth power. Does this work two to add them up? What is 10 times three plus three plus three? Three plus three is six plus three is nine. You still get to the ninth power, but with our lesson today, we're trying to show that you can make it exponential. All right, okay. How do the rules work? Andre and Elena wanna write 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared with a single exponent. Andre says, when you multiply power the same base, it just means you add the exponents. So 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared. And so we add them up, two, two, and two becomes 10 to the six. Now I would agree with that. That is a true statement. We can see we did that right here. 10 to the third, three times. We added the exponents and got 10 to the ninth. No problem. Elena says 10 squared is multiplied by itself three times. So it's 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared equals 10 squared to the third power. This part right here, I totally agree with. That matches what we did right there, doesn't it? This is like 10 to the third, and we did it three times. Totally matches. But then notice what her next step was. She said, so because of that, let's do 10 to two plus three. The difference between the two plus three and what we did up above was we said the exponents here should be multiplied together. So that's where she made a little mistake here. This shouldn't be 10 to the fifth, it should be 10 to the two times three, which should still be 10 to the six. So we'd agree fully with Andre, and we would say Elena was on the right track until she got right there and made a little mistake. If she had said it's two times three, that would have been perfect, okay? So for today's lesson, basically what we're saying is that we can make another rule. Taking a power of 10 and raising it to another power is the same as multiplying the exponents. And that's the idea there. So I have the four to the third power is like multiplying the exponents. Four times three is 12. And here's another example, six to the 11, six times 11 is 66. And that's the idea. So why don't you pause there, do your homework, and then press play again when you're ready to check and see how you did. All right, tonight's homework, here we go. Half eight, unit seven, lesson three. We're gonna be having the same base and we're multiplying the exponents together. So this is seven to the second power. So it's seven times two, which is 14. So we'd say it's 10 to the 14th power. Here the base stays the same. Nine to the third power is nine times three, which is 27. Base stays the same as 10 and six to the third power is six times three, which is 18. Base here stays the same, and then we get two times three. Two times three is six. Here we have base is still a 10. Three times two is still six. And finally, we have a 10, there's a base, and five times seven is 35. All right, the next one. This one has a couple parts to it. There's a part on my other side, there's three parts. It says, if you have one million number cubes, and each one has a one inch on its side, if you stack the cubes on top of one another to make an enormous tower, how high would they reach? Well, again, think about this. I have each one and it's equal to one inch. And I have two inches and I would make three is three inches, four is four inches, and so on forever. And I'm gonna do that up to one million, which tells me that how tall it would be would be 
one million inches. So that's what the answer would be. I don't think they want you to leave it like that. So if you put a million inches, you are correct. I'm guessing they probably want you to convert that into feet and then perhaps even into miles. So let's do that real quick. As feet, we would say it's a million, um, not times. I'm gonna take the inches and divide it by how many feet I have by inches in a foot. So we're gonna divide it by 12 because there are 12 inches in one foot. This is the same as multiplying it by, I'm gonna do multiplication just for now, okay? I can multiply by this in ratio, one foot in 12 inches, right? That's the same as dividing by 12, but I'll make a multiplication just so we can see where that came from. One foot times 12. So a million divided by 12 is equal to about 83,333 feet is how tall that would be. If I want to turn that into miles, then I would take the 83,333 and we would say that there is what? That there are in one mile, there are about 5,280 feet. So this will put it in terms of miles. So 83,000 divided by 5,000-ish, it's gonna be 15.78 miles. Again, I know the answer is just a million inches. My guess is they want you to put it in terms of feet or miles just to work on some conversions as well. If you arrange the cubes on the floor to make a square, would the square fit in your classroom? Okay. So let's think about this here. First of all, we had a million of these, right? <laughs> okay, so to make it a square, a square comes when I have the same number, right? Let's just say four times four, and I multiply it together to get four times four to get me 16. I wanna think of two numbers I can multiply together that's gonna get me to a million is part of the idea here, what that square is gonna be. So first, let's break this down into a base 10. This can actually be written as 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 power. Knowing that I can split that apart so that, remember, I can do m plus n for my exponential powers. What number can I have for m and n to break this apart so that I have the same number? I could do 10 to the 3 plus 3 power, which is the same as 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 3rd. Now, as a 10 to the third, I can rewrite that as 10 with three zeros times uh, one, sorry, with three zeros. So what we're doing is, is what I did here is I said, well, I took my million and I put it into 10 to the sixth power. So well, let me rewrite that as two different groups of 10, 10 to the third times 10 to the third, because that's what I did over here with square. Four times four is 16. This is 10 to the third times 10 to the third gets me a million. Then I rewrote that without the base 10 to get me my actual number. So the distance here, uh, or the, uh, the square of the, uh, the cubes would be 1,000 inches by 1,000 inches. Would that fit in my classroom? I don't know my classroom's size in inches. So let me again convert this by multiplying it by one foot is the same as 12 inches. So 1,000 divided by 12 is equal to about 83 feet. 83 feet is a little bit too large for a classroom, all right? Most classrooms aren't 83 feet long. Not sure how large your classroom is. You can check it out later, but that's a pretty big room. Um, so we would probably say it wouldn't fit. Now using these same numbers here, if you layered the cube to make one big cube, a little cube to make one big cube, what would the dimensions of the cube be? Again, we knew that we had a million to start with. And we know that that is 10 to the sixth power. Okay, and when we talk about volume, it's gonna be 10 times something, 10 times something, times 10 times something, <laughs> okay? Or, as we would think about this, this is 10 to some number, and we're gonna do that three times. That's how we do volume, right? Length times width times height, but they're all gonna be the same. So I take my million, I break it into 10 to the sixth power, and I write that as 10 to the x, x, and another x, and I do it three times. So what number would I put right there that would multiply with x, so three times x, that would get me up to a six. That's my goal there, three times x equals six. So if I divide both sides by three, my x is gonna be equal to two. So the dimension of the cube would be 10 squared. What is 10 squared? 10 squared, that's the one with how many zeros after it? Two zeros. 
So the dimension would be 100 inches by 100 inches would be the dimensions of that cube. And that's the idea. All right, cool. Let's go to the next one. An amoeba divides in to form two amoebas after one hour. One hour later, they form four. Every hour, it keeps dividing to form two more. It keeps going, right? So how many are there after one hour? There are two. They already gave us that. After two hours, so this divides again, which means it's going to be multiplying by itself, two times two, which is four. Another way of saying that is two squared, right? Uh, two hours, that's what I get there. So how about six hours? That'd be two to the sixth power. Just once the expression, so I can leave it there, if you solved it, you'd end up with 64. And then this one expression for 24 hours, two to the 24th power. If you wanted to work that out, you could. That's 16,777,216. Okay. So after one day, you got a whole lot more than the one you started with. That's some quick growth there, isn't it? So why might exponential notation be preferable to answer these questions? That's for you to write down. Why would you prefer to write an answer like this instead of all of that? I'll let you figure that one out on your own. Okay, and our next one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just write real quick here my other choices. I know on the back side there's choice C, which is k equals 2e minus 9, e plus 4 equals k plus 4, and choice D is k minus 9 equals 2 times e minus 9, and e plus 4 equals k. All right, so those are my choices here. Let's take a look at what I'm dealing with. Elena noticed that nine years ago, her cousin Kate was twice as old as Elena was then. Then Elena said, in four years, I'll be as old as Kate is now. If Elena is currently E years old and Katie is nine years old, uh, is K years old, which system equation matches the story? Okay, so let's do look at a couple things. First of all, notice that for the, for the last part of the equation, we have E plus four equals K, E plus K, E equals K plus four, and E plus four equals K plus four, and E plus four equals K. For this last part here, in four years, I'll be as old as Katie is now. That's probably where, what you might wanna start off with as being the easier part of the equation to mess with, okay? So if, um, so Elaine is saying that in four years, in four years, so her age plus four more years is gonna equal Katie's age. So where Katie is right now and where Elena is right now if you add four more years to Elena's age, she'll be what Katie is, okay? So based upon that information, right, we can see that I have that equation right here in D, and I have that over here in A, all right? That's what I know so far. So I can eliminate pretty much C and B at this point. So let's look at this first point. It says that nine years ago, her cousin Katie was twice as old as Elena was then. So we know that Katie at that time was twice what Elena was, okay? But if you look here, you go, well, I don't see that anywhere. There's nothing there. You have all these nines over the place. Well, that's an important piece of information because this was all nine years ago. So if you take Katie's age and you take away nine, and then let's do some parentheses here, be careful. We take Elena's age and we subtract nine I, why do I take away nine? Because it was nine years ago. You have to go less than what she is currently. Now I can find out what they're gonna be. Where do I see that equation at? Well, I see it right here in D. So our answer for this one is gonna be D. That makes the most sense, okay? That is it for today. Hope you have a great one and we'll see you next time.